For this ye know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 5. Friends, what does this verse mean? First, I will tell you what this verse does not mean. This verse does not mean that a truly saved, born-again Christian can lose their salvation. The Bible is absolutely clear that God keeps those who believe in Him. John chapter 10, verse 28, Jesus said, And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Amen. Hallelujah. The doctrine of eternal security, the doctrine that I so dearly love, the sweet promise of God that whosoever believes in Him will never perish, but will have everlasting life. So, that is what Ephesians chapter 5 does not mean, but what does it mean? Well, it's very simple. It means that there's no such thing as a Christian whoremonger. There's no such thing as a Christian idolater. There's absolutely, without a doubt, no such thing as a Christian who leads a lifestyle of sin. Now, this does not settle well with those who teach the false doctrine of easy believism. Those like James Battelle from Ex-Catholics for Christ, Listen to how he teaches Ephesians chapter 5, verse 5. And in case there's any confusion, verse 5, This ye know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. If you persist in sins, found here, the kingdom of God is not for you when you die. You will lose your millennial inheritance. Not your salvation, but your right to rule and reign with him for a thousand years. So according to James, a Christian can live a lifestyle of sin, but as a consequence of that, God will take their life early, which I believe is his interpretation of the sin unto death, which is a false interpretation that easy believism heretics will commonly use, and they will also lose their right to rule and reign with Christ for a thousand years. Now let's see James deny that without holiness any man can see God, and also again teach that a Christian can lose their right to rule and reign with Christ for a thousand years. All this nonsense that you hear on the radio, you know, you must be holy in order to go to heaven, and if you're not holy, you won't go to heaven. You have an imputed righteousness. If you're not holy, and you die in perpetual backslidden state, you could lose your millennial inheritance. I'll grant you that. You could lose your privilege to rule and reign with him for a thousand years. That is an absolute false teaching. This is a perfect example of how someone who teaches easy believism takes verses out of context to fit their false theology. Without a doubt, James Wattel teaches easy believism. He's an easy believism heretic. And one of the easiest ways to recognize that someone teaches easy believism is how they define repentance. They will either completely remove repentance from the gospel, or they will redefine repentance to where it doesn't mean to turn from sin. They will say many different things. Repentance means just a change of mind. Repentance means to turn from unbelief to belief. Repentance is just sorrow, but they will absolutely deny and reject the idea that repentance means to turn from sin. And that is what the Bible teaches. You must turn from your sin. Turn from your sin and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, on the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is how a person is saved. That is the true gospel. But they will absolutely reject that. So, I want to show you another clip with James Patel just to clear this up. Um, if it's already not evident to you from the verse that, or the clip that I just showed that he teaches easy believism, it will be after this because we'll see how he defines repentance. And um, you know, James Patel is a flip flopper. You know, he says one thing in one video and another thing in another video, so it can be kind of confusing, maybe kind of hard to to see what he actually teaches, but when you get down to the bottom of it, he will deny that repentance means to turn from sin for salvation. And that is an easy believism heretic. And in this video clip, I will show, I will have comments, and I will show verses from the Bible, uh, how James is outright contradicting scripture as he's speaking and teaching. 
And here he's saying to repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And that word repent, if you go back to the Old Testament, I've got some notes here, which is unusual for me. The word repent appears 21 times in your Jewish Old Testament, the Jewish Tanakh. The word repenteth appears five times, and the word repented appears 32 times. And it simply means to be sorry, to console oneself of regret, to have pity, etc., etc. It never once means to turn from your sins in order to be saved. That's lordship salvation. That's a works righteous system. And that message, that gospel, if you wish to call it a gospel, curses people. It cripples people. You tell someone to turn from all of their sins in order to be saved, it's impossible. You were born a sinner and you will die a sinner. You might be justified by faith, you might have Christ's imputed righteousness, but you're still a sinner. You confess your sins every day, according to 1 John chapter 1, in order to stay in fellowship with the Lord God of the Bible. You should see by now that James would tell teaches easy believism. He denies that repentance means to turn from sin. He denies that without holiness, uh, no one can see the Lord, which is what the Bible teaches. Um, so this video is not just about James Patel. This video is about refuting easy believism. James Patel is one of the many easy believism heretics. I could uh, easily use anyone else. In future videos, I may use James again, or I may use other people, such as Steven Anderson. He's a big easy believism heretic, or Jack Hiles. Um, so I want to go back to the thing that how James interprets Ephesians chapter 5, verse 5. He says that those who are saved can still live a lifestyle of sin, but they will lose their inheritance into the thousand-year reign of Christ. And now I want to go over a few different things um, to refute this. And first of all, I want to talk about the kingdom of heaven versus the kingdom of God, which isn't a huge thing in this study, and I'm not going to go into very much detail in it, Lord willing. I need, really need to do a study on this. But um, we will see how he says that there is a difference between the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God, and there isn't. Um, usually, people who teach dispensational salvation will say that there's a difference between the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. Um, but also, easy believism heretics will. And they'll do this so they can teach other false doctrines with it. So, let's see James say this. The kingdom of heaven, in this context, is a literal Jewish kingdom. And Jesus Christ is a king. And he's saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's right here, right now, and I'm your king. The kingdom of God is also the kingdom of heaven. But the kingdom of God, primarily, is a spiritual kingdom. If you're alive today watching this video, if you're born again, uh, you are in the spiritual kingdom. And once the rapture's been and gone, we come back with Jesus Christ at the end of the Great Tribulation to rule and reign with him for a thousand years in a literal kingdom of heaven. Um, there is absolutely no difference between the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. Um, there are things that need to be examined and that uh, need to be explained. There is, you know, in the sense there is a kingdom of heaven on earth, you know, where the Lord says it's like a net and, you know, it, it collects, you know, basically, you know, those who are lost and saved in a sense. I don't know the exact parable, but so in a way there are, there are professing Christians who are in this kingdom, but they're really not in the kingdom of God and all that. And there's the thousand year reign and stuff. But to say that the kingdom of heaven is one thing and the kingdom of God is another thing is completely false. And I'll refute that right now. We go to Matthew 19. And this is a passage that I went over in my previous Easy Believism video. Find it here. Matthew 19, verse 23 and 24. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. Okay, so I use this to say that salvation isn't easy. It's not easy, at least for the rich people. That's what this verse says. It says, Hardly 
enter into the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of heaven. We go into verse 24, and again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. So now we have the kingdom of God. He used those right next to each other, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, absolutely no difference whatsoever. Okay, and I know that that won't please some of you. You still will um, vehement, vehemently say, you know, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven are separate, but they're not. And uh, so I'm not gonna go into any more of that, but that's, that's one thing that uh, easy believers and heretics will distort and uh, so now let's go on to the next thing. The kingdom, of, the kingdom, the thousand year reign with Christ is part of salvation. Okay? It's part of the free gift. It's a promise that all believers will have. Um, let's look at Revelation chapter 21, verse 7 and 8. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. 1 John chapter 5, verse 5 says, Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? So every believer overcomes. So Revelation 21, 7, He that overcometh shall inherit all things. Every believer, everyone who is truly saved, will inherit all things with Christ. They become a child of God. Revelation 21, 8 says, But the fearful, the unbelieving, and the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So here we have some of the same things that are listed in Ephesians 5, chapter 5, verse 5. We've got whoremongers and idolaters. Okay, now it's saying whoremongers and idolaters are going to burn in the lake of fire. So Ephesians chapter 5, verse 5, uh, someone who teaches easy believism like James Patel, they try to say that you can be a Christian whoremonger, you can be a Christian idolater, you just won't reign with Christ for a thousand years. Well, first of all, it says that every saved believer in Revelation 21.7 is going to inherit all things. So that's a guarantee that they will inherit the thousand year reign with Christ. And then verse 21.8 says that whoremongers and idolaters will go to hell. That's undeniable. So we see, is there a contradiction there? No, there's not a contradiction. There's no such thing as a Christian whoremonger or a Christian idolater. When it says they will not inherit the kingdom of Christ and of God, that means that they are not saved. That they never were saved. If you're a whoremonger or an idolater, you need to repent and get saved. Okay? So, I also want to make notice that in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 5, when it says... They will not inherit the kingdom of Christ and of God. Um, from what I understand, that is a figure of speech called a hendiadis, which means basically two different words for the same idea. We're not talking about the kingdom of Christ and the kingdom of God are two separate kingdoms, and they won't inherit either one of them. We're talking about one kingdom here, the kingdom of Christ and of God. And so... Um, it means that you know this is God, God's kingdom, this is Christ's kingdom, and basically that you know Christ and God are on the same level. So this is a good verse that you can use to defend the deity of Christ, that God the Father and Jesus Christ are equal here. Uh, you know it's God's kingdom, it's Christ's kingdom, and also to defend the Trinity because we got two persons of the Trinity there. They are one and the same, but they are also distinctly separate. Well, not separate, but they're distinct. Sorry, not separate, uh, but distinct from one another. So let's continue on. So already, I've com it's completely destroyed his false teaching. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. That would include the thousand year reign with Christ. And whoremongers and idolaters go to hell. At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him, and set him in the midst of them, and said, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted, and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. So you're saying I can ask this cat any question? The cat is connected to the computer. You just type in the question, it will read his mind. Oh. 
You're the man! I've been looking for this for weeks. Except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven.